Hi, I'm Oliver Pattison, an independent designer and developer. This is a quick introduction to implementing responsive images for Jekyll using SourceSet. I will demonstrate how to generate responsive images with Liquid Includes and ImageX, an image processing service. Many of us have chosen static sites for their speed, but with some adjustments to our process, we can make them even faster. The heaviest elements on many websites are images. According to the HTTP archive, 63.5% of the average page's weight was made up of images. There are two key factors of uncertainty when building responsively, the size of a device and the speed of a network connection. In the spirit of Postel's robustness principle, let's be conservative in what we send. For example, if a client has a 360 pixel wide viewport, there usually won't be a benefit in being served a 1000 pixel wide image. The cost of serving heavier images to people includes slower performance measured by transfer speeds and memory use, and increased bandwidth costs, which is an actual dollar cost for many people. Consider metered mobile data plans. Cutting down on the size of served images is one of the most effective methods for improving the perceived performance of an existing site. We now have a well-supported web standard to help us deal with image weight by serving the right images at the right sizes. Source set. First, let's take a look at some reusable code, a building block that we will use throughout this demo. We assign a variable to the image map sequence from the post YAML front matter, and then use that variable immediately in a block. Why use and include for images? Flexibility. If we have one or more images specified, the same liquid include can be used for each of them. If our include gets more complicated, as it certainly will when we add source set, we can add complexity without changing the original content or page metadata. Source set and sizes are attributes of the image element that combine to give a browser a hint about what it needs to download. Source set provides an array of image sources. The sizes attribute resembles CSS media queries giving information about image dimensions at various responsive breakpoints without having to download an image first. The challenge here is coming up with the right sources and matching sizes. Remember, the browser chooses its source based on the information we provide in these two attributes. The browser often doesn't know the size of the image in the page. For the simplicity of this demo, we will use three image source sizes. People have asked me, how many sources do you need? It depends on the case. Each design will have its own requirements for source set and sizes. This syntax is verbose. We can't help it. We need to give the browser options for sources. Each image has multiple URL paths, providing the browser a hint about the image's relative size on the page with the sizes attribute. Now let's define a sizes string, which will be included site-wide in every image block that needs a sizes attribute. Let's also define a default source set sequence. These values will be looped to generate every source set attribute in our demo. The problem is generating those images. We'll probably need to use image editing software to generate all of the variants and then give unique names to each file. For a handful of files, this is manageable. But what if our site has lots of images? And what if we need many source set variants for, of each image? I saw this problem for sites that feature many images. Each image needs multiple sources, meaning potentially hundreds of sources that might need to be generated for a single site. Even with automated tools, that is a lot of work and a lot of room for error. It is also work that might need to be redone if a design is adjusted or specifications change. ImageX is part of the solution for my projects. What if we could have only one source per image, and from that we could create many variants at different sizes and flexible quality settings? Using URL parameters or an ImageX plugin that generates custom URLs, we can take a single source and then create effectively unlimited variants. We can also build this into any Jekyll site. Let's extend our earlier example, which had three source variants. With some adjustments to the source set liquid include, the image is now processed by ImageX. All variants are generated on request by ImageX, and we can even change the parameters if our specifications change. In our request for saving bytes, we made a mistake with our image processing with this JPEG. A quality setting created noticeable compression artifacts in the sky. With a parameter change in the source specified in the front matter, we can change the output. To see how to configure the ImageX plugin for Jekyll, Take a look at the documentation for the plugin or review the source for this demo. Here are a few important things to know about ImageX. The Jekyll ImageX plugin does not do anything unless Jekyll env, the environmental variable, is set to production. If the ImageX plugin is turned off, a site will not fail to build, but images won't be processed. I recommend Amazon S3 for hosting with ImageX, but any web source will do. Make sure you can deploy your site or load your source images before turning on ImageX. ImageX costs money. In my opinion, it is well worth it if you're processing a lot of images and need a CDN to host them. 
You don't need ImageX to process responsive images, but it's one effective way to do it, and the service has other features worth looking into as well. You can learn more by checking out the repo for this demo on GitHub or reading my recommended resources. I am Oliver Makes on Twitter and on the web. I'm always willing to talk about static sites and excited to see what you're working on.